Good morning, lively forum attenders. <laughs> I love when there's so much energy in this room. Very happy to in, uh, welcome you to the Rector's Forum this morning. Ed is uh, on a well-deserved weekend away to celebrate his birthday and his and Hope's anniversary. So we send our blessings and prayers to them and um, look forward to his return with lots of energy. I want to welcome those of you who are joining us by streaming. We're very, very glad to have you with us and um, uh, very glad to have you every Sunday, but this is going to be a great one. If you're new at All Saints Church, or if you're visiting us for the first time this morning, we have a couple suggestions for you. We have some green uh, sheets on a clipboard over here. If you're not on our mailing list, if you want to sign uh, onto that sheet, we can send you emails about upcoming speakers and programs we have here in the forum. If you are already getting our emails, don't sign the pager, paper. Uh, and at the welcome table, just outside of Riga's house here, you will find red welcome bags for... Uh, those of you who are new, and it's full of information about programs and ministries here at All Saints Church, you can fill out a welcome card and tell us all about you. Each Sunday, we're called to put our faith into action, and you can stop at the action table on your way out this morning. We have a couple actions around communications and net neutrality, and there'll be lots of information at the table about both of those actions. And finally, we wouldn't be able to uh, offer the enlightening and important speakers that we have here in the forum without generous financial support. So if you have not pledged or you would like to make a gift to All Saints Church in support of this kind of ministry, stop by our giving table on the lawn. We are really thrilled to have a special Rector's Forum this Sunday focused on the experience of transgender members of our human family as we continue to explore and embrace the rich diversity of the LGBTQ experience. I want to just, as an aside, call your attention to Out of the Box, which is an amazing documentary made here at All Saints Church. We were in partners with the producers. It was directed by our beloved Louise Brooks. And it is an amazing witness to the um, lives of transgender Episcopalians. You can go to our Facebook, you can go to our website and click on Facebook page. It'll take you to the link for the movie. And I would suggest you send it to everyone you know who has questions or wants to have a um, really moving experience. I cannot recommend it highly enough. This morning we are using the lens of the wonderful hit show Transparent to lead us into a discussion of transgender experience. For many of us, this has been the water cooler show of the season for its amazing ability to put a human face on an issue that is a growing edge for our church and for our country. And it's just a whole lot of fun. It's a great show, and it's a great show about Los Angeles. <laughs> this morning, we welcome Zachary Drucker, an artist and full-time consultant for the show in collaboration with artist Reese Ernst. That consultation role crea inv includes creative decisions, hiring, and overseeing key elements of the production. Zachary and Reese artistic marks are all over this wonderful production, from the best opening credits on television to the inclusion of at least three generations from the trans community on screen. Their commitment to a transformative action program has found and employed transgender workers behind the scenes, creating a model for television and film production. I will let Zachary fill you in on the details of her remarkable story. <laughs> We're also thrilled to have back in the forum our great friend and All Saints member, Emmy Award-winning actor Bradley Whitford. We all know and love Brad from his role as Josh Lyman on the West Wing, the perhaps the TV, sh TV show in residence here at All Saints Church. <laughs> and from his many roles in film, stage, and television, including Studio 60, The Good Guys, Saving Mr. Banks, Trophy Wife, and Boeing Boeing on Broadway. You can see him this year in a, the new Showtime production, Happy-ish and in a recurring role as Mark on Transparent. Brad's activism and his willingness to speak out for progressive causes is equally impressive, from his involvement in the stage reading of Eight, about the Prop 8 challenge, to his involvement in the campaigns against Props 30 and 32 here in California, and his support for Mary Burke in her campaign against Scott Walker in Wisconsin. <laughs> Which we appreciate, Brad. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming their wonderful guests, Zachary and Brad. Does this work? Um, uh, it's great to be here. Um, I really want to get to uh, talking about Zachary. I'll talk for a second. Uh, but for 
any of the uh, uninitiated, uh, I'll just show you two short uh, trailers of my work over my career. No. Uh, of <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I feel a, a little fraudulent because um, I do think this, this show has turned into um, just one of the most exciting um, shows I've ever been a part of. Uh, but it, it came out, it came about purely by accident. Uh, for me, uh, simply because I wanted to work with um, with Jeffrey, <laughs> um, so much so that it didn't even take great writing to make me do it. I never, I, I sort of took a perverse pride in the fact that I was the only actor on the planet who had never done uh, Law and Order. And last spring, they asked me to do a Law and Order. I was like, no, I don't want to do it. You know, I, uh, that's okay. I, I don't want to do a Law and Order. And I said, well, who's it? They said, they really want you. I said, who's it with? They said, Jeffrey Tambor. I said, absolutely. So I went uh, because I love Jeffrey Tambor. I didn't know him that well. Um, but I loved him as an actor uh, in everything he's done. Uh, so I did this stupid episode of <laughs> Law and Order SVU. And Jeffrey comes in one day and says, I can't believe it, the show uh, I did for Amazon uh, is going on. Uh, and then I was contacted through, uh, through Jeffrey and through Jill, and I spoke to Jill, I read the script, I saw some of Jill's work. Um, the transgender experience is part of my family. I've uh, seen my family go through that uh, transition. It was something I was dying uh, to be a part of in any way. And uh, honestly, even though uh, I've never been a guy who's um, put on women's clothes in private, and I would be honest here in church, um, <laughs> I, was, I was so excited and, and scared uh, I just thought it would be fascinating um, uh, to do that. So that's how I got to sort of hitch my, uh, myself uh, to, to this wonderful experience. And I met Zachary uh, early on um, after a read-through, and Zachary was vital to the every moment of, um, of this show. Um, I gotta walk in heels. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> None more important than teaching me how to walk in heels. Because <laughs> I was running down a hallway like this, and Zachary's like, you're walking on a rope. You're walking on a rope. You're walking on a rope. Um... um but I want to I, I want to get to how how Zachary uh, came to this. It's as you can see from everybody involved with this. Um, it's it's a, 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 as an actor, a writer, director. It's a miracle when anything works. It is at all, and it's it it, it it's an overwhelming privilege uh, to be a part of something um, at this moment uh, that does what storytellers. Um, the powerful thing that they can do, which is uh, put heart and flesh and bone on um, what can be scary abstractions uh, culturally. Um, so I, you can see uh, the actors in these this, uh, uh, sort of unable to express how lucky they feel, and I certainly. Uh, feel that way. Jill Salloway, if anybody doesn't know, uh, this show came out of her experience when her father 
announced to the family at age, what was it? Uh, Mid-70s. Mid-70s. That... They. uh, uh, They were transgender. Yes. Oh, they. (laughs) See? The pronouns are hell. (laughs) I can can attest to that. Um, So this uh, comes from Jill's personal experience. One thing I can say as, uh, as an actor and a critic who's been in uh, stuff that is uh, like we used to call West Wing liberal porn, um, <laughs> that, that is kind of <laughs> sort of <laughs> issue, uh, issue-oriented stuff. What I love ab- about this show um, is that it deals... I think with all of these issues with complexity, the complexity and the sensitivity that they deserve. At the same time, the show is not terminally irony deficient. Um, and that can be a real, uh, that, can, that can be a real danger. And there's a real sense of joy and humor uh, in the show that I think is really important. But, Zachary, how did you come to this project? Uh, what was your story previous to this project that got you connected with the project? And um, what was it like working on the show? Wow, well, that's a lot. Um, like you said, Jill Soloway, uh, her parent, her father, came out as trans a few years ago, and it's sort of the foundation for Transparent. Um, I come from being a cultural producer and an artist, I actually moved to Los Angeles 10 years ago to go to CalArts. So my um, background is as an art maker, and I've sort of come into the side door to Hollywood. Um, Reese met Jill at Sundance, and then we were connected to her through a mutual friend uh, when she started developing the pilot, which was about a year and a half ago. And she was interested in creating an authentic representation of a trans person. And I read recently in an interview that she did that, which is such a basic point, she said, you know, this is the first time we've seen a trans person situated in a family narrative. Um, What I said in that little piece about trans people being relegated to the roles of victims and villains is true. Um, We have Silence of the Lambs, we have Psycho, Sleepaway Camp, we have the talk shows of the 1990s, Mari Povich, Sally Jesse Raphael, (laughs) et al. Um, There certainly has been a tremendous void when it comes to complex representations of trans people and we're really at the very beginning of a civil rights movement, despite the fact that we've existed through time, forever, um, in hiding, usually. Uh, I like to say that gender is a journey, not a destination. Um, I transitioned eight years ago, a long time ago. Uh, Feels like a a lifetime ago. Uh, I'm really fortunate to come from an incredibly supportive family, so I understand Um, the sort of complexity of of family dynamics and not just walking away or not being walked away from, which is what a lot of trans people experience um, when deciding to live their truth. Um, Maura, on Transparent, is coming to this point later in life. This is usually true of... um, trans people who are coming from a cross-dressing history. So, you know, when I think about the trans community, it's such a diverse community. Um, We're not tied to cultural uh, backgrounds or ethnicity or class or religion. Um, We come from all different kinds of communities. that the thing that ties us together is a feeling of not quite matching, right? Like, not quite uh, feeling comfortable in the role that you've been assigned. 
the gender role that you've been assigned. It's like being miscast. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Permanently, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, we do things to sort of um, compensate for that, but ultimately, you know, the, the noble choice is to really be who you are and to, be, to create the world that you want to live in. I think Je uh, the phrase, I think Je it was Jeffrey's phrase, uh, was it in the script that he, um, he he's making a break for freedom. Um, yeah, uh, it was uh, off the, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, one thing I want to say, um, it, it was interesting to me, um, uh, I play a closeted um, guy who at this point thinks he knows two things. <laughs> um, that he's heterosexual um, uh, and that he's a guy. Uh, my uh, part in the show takes place in flashback in the 90s and it was very interesting for me to understand the sort of uh, hierarchical prejudices um, my guy is very homophobic, which is part of a lot of the history of cross-dressing because at a time when homosexuality uh, was seen as perversion, if you were a gay, if you were a cross-dresser who acknowledged that you were gay, you ruined it for everybody. Now, I noticed, I think, I, I've heard People who cross-dress feel a, condescension, a cond condescension um, from the transgender community because the transgender people are going, come on, sweetheart, you know, something's going on here, right? <laughs> um, uh, and it, it, it was interesting, and that, that, um, that, homoph that ho whole, the homophobia in the... Um, in the cross-dressing community really, um, uh, that dynamic surprised me and it unfortunately flared up again as we touch on a little bit uh, during the AIDS crisis because it was those people away. Um, but it, uh, you know, it was interesting to see that, that fear of what we don't, no, and don't understand. Nobody is immune from it. Even members of what we would think uh, are uh, a community that might understand it, that there is a hierarchy about and, and a fear about what is di different. And I think um, mm. it's interesting how the show hits on that. I, one of the scariest I've done as an actor, it's always amazing, the, the access. Uh, you know, oh, you're in Hollywood? I mean, I've you know, here, scrub up and hold a scalpel. I mean, they, like, they'll, like, let you in and, like, into the White House. And, this, you know, we're not supposed to show you, but those are the nuclear codes, you know. Because <laughs> you're in Hollywood. Um, and one of the most, truly one of the most terrifying, I, I went uh, to a cross uh, I was originally going to just cross-dress, which I had never done, and go to a group. Um, and then I thought that was dishonest. Um, um, and so I said, look, this is what we're doing. We're trying to do this show well. Can I just hear your stories? And it was in incredibly moving. It was great for me as an actor because I realized the range of experience um, was incredible. Straight, married people whose wives knew, a Marine, um, uh, and a full range of cross-dressing. Some hyper uh, sexualized, uh, you know, and kind of porny, and some is just like, you know, a crappy wig and a schmata, and, you know. <laughs> you know, this is me, you know. Um, so it gave me this, a uh, 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 a real s sense of freedom and it was very moving because these people just wanted to be together safely. Um, 
and there was a man in his 70s, very much uh, like Mo uh, Mort, who was Mora, who was uh, transitioning. And I, as I was leaving, I said, "Thank you, you know, thank you so much." He had his family had totally he had been fired. He, his family had totally rejected him. His children thought he was a degenerate. Uh, he was going through very difficult uh, uh, I, surgical transitions alone. Uh, and I said, as I was leaving, I just said, you know, I think it's incredibly, it's incredibly brave what you're doing. And it was interesting to me what he said. He said, I know you're being, I, I really appreciate it. I know you're being nice. Um, uh, but uh, honestly, uh, I'm not being brave. I, I, the, I, I, he said, when I think about it, do you think I want in my 70s to be uh, uh, going through this? This is, uh, this is, it's not even a question. This is something I, ha this is who I am. Uh, which I thought was a really interesting, um, unsentimental, unsentimental um, look at it. Um, tell me, uh, tell me about. Uh, 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 I can chime. In. Go, yeah, yeah no, chime so in. Just chime. The, <laughs> the thing about the journey, right? Mora sort of is discovering herself through time. Um, and one of the things that I did on the job was uh, create this sort of thread. What, how did she arrive here at 70 years old and why did it take so long, right? right? So which is the thing that you're talking about, Bradley. Um, and I think, you know, there's all these distinctions that we make within our communities. Um, and the cross-dressing community did very early on kind of uh, separate itself from the, from the rest of the LGBT community. And that was because um, many of the members of that community kind of saw themselves as married men, family men, businessmen. And this faction actually still really exists. Um, it's very different than the trans community. And I, you know, I think it's a different way of thinking. I think it's an older way of thinking sometimes because it's so, predicated on a, a male-female kind of experience, right? Where, whereas transness is about the spectrum and about the space in between. Um, Mora, you know, finds herself attracted to women, ends up in a heterosexual partnership with a woman and kids, and this is what happens to a lot of cross-dressers. And then later in life, they realize, um, I've been living a lie this whole time. And the thing that's so interesting, I think, in Transparent is Bradley's character, Marcy, uh, sort of very strongly adheres to that idea, you know, of sort of playing out a fantasy and relegating it to uh, a very isolated space and community and it being kind of tucked away and secretive and private. Um, which, which makes it more exciting and uh, fun. Puts the, it, it, that there's compression under it when you're hiding. Sin I, feels holy. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I just have to. I have to think about that for a second. <laughs> um, anyways. You know, one, <laughs> one thing that became, uh, it seems very obvious, um, but uh, I talked to some people in the community who, who don't like the phrase uh, LG, LG, B, uh, Alphabet soup. Right. Yeah. Uh, they don't like <laughs> trans being part of that because um, the... the uh, being gay or lesbian or bi is is sexuality. Trans is gender, and gender is different from sexuality. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a confusing thing for uh, for people uh, for people to understand. It's interesting to me. Do uh, uh, do most people 
who transition, does their um, sexual uh, preference remain the same? Or it's does so gender... It's interesting that you bring that up, because the whole um, phenomenon around the public person, Bruce Jenner, who's sort of, you know, people were asking that kind of recently. You know, sometimes when your gender changes, so does your preference. Um, and I think maybe uh, that illuminates the ways in which we can all be sort of more flexible than we think we are. Um, and you're right, I think that gender is oftentimes conflated with who we're attracted to, who we're drawn to. Um, it's, it is one community in a lot of, you know, historically it's one community. We congregate in the same spaces. If you go back sort of pre-Stonewall, 1950s, um, trans people were always in the room. Trans people started the Stonewall riots in New York City in 1969, which was the beginning of the gay liberation movement. Um, I really see transness as an extension of feminism. Uh, however, in that we are fighting for gender equality, um, regardless of what's between our legs or who, you know, how we were socialized, how we were brought up. Um, I think that you know, transness sort of represents a cross section of those two communities, and that's why it's the future. That's why it is the next civil rights movement. Um, it frees all of us. It's uh, uh, one of the things that was interesting to me working on this show, it just reminds me of something that I'm reminded of every day as I raise kids um, and realize, I mean, a joke I make often is, uh, you know, 5,000 years of socialization didn't go out the window with the first Village People album. I mean, <laughs> people, uh, people are freaked out, I am freaked out, we're all freaked out about uh, talking about uh, sexuality and gender issues, it, it electrocutes us. It's, George Regas said in one of his sermons, you know, the message, and, it, and it, I really, uh, to my horror, it's true, the message that we give our children <laughs> is, uh, inevitably, it's dirty, you should be ashamed of it, and you should save it for someone you love. <laughs> it's insane. It's an insane message, but, but I do believe um, uh, that we all get it. And I do want to say that, like, for Jeffrey and me, I mean, you know, to, <laughs> you know, I, I, we would just have moments of just disbelieving that we were doing it. It was funny, he came out of his costume fitting right before me, and he, and he just looked pale. <laughs> and, I, and I said, how was it? And he said, I, you know, I was ready for the bra and the, the undergarments. Uh, I just, I wasn't ready for the bathing suit. <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. Oh yeah, questions. Any questions? Raise your hand. If you have a question, we'll raise your hand. In the front. Yeah. Hello. Wait, please wait for the mic. No. Oh. Okay. We'll Ooh. bring the mic. One second. You'll be next. Go ahead. I've been helped by a Jungian analyst to understand that I am both feminine and masculine, and I feel I'm a more whole person because I understand this as a heterosexual male. Does that have meaning for you, those in the transsexual community that even though your identification changes, you still remain masculine and feminine? I'll speak to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, th you know, on I, I really honestly feel like it's a, a privilege to experience life from both of those perspectives, from both sides of the fence. I think that each and every one of us in this room has feminine and masculine aspects. Um, and that, you know, that's built into our DNA. I think gender is really constructed. You know, it's really culturally ingrained. It's something we've learned. Um, and I think in the future, I hope that people will feel less pressure to kind of 
conform to those expectations. And I think that really actually comes from parenting and from our communities. Um, and bringing children into the world uh, without the expectation of who they're going to be. And by the way, this is not, uh, this is not a new arena um, for storytelling. I mean, uh, Shakespeare was obsessed, mm. obsessed uh, with, uh, with these issues. Just, um, uh, sexual identification, gender issues, just, you know, go read Twelfth Night. Mm. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit your statement that transitioning and trans is not a sexual issue, it's a gender issue? Can you just expound a little on that? Uh, yeah, you know, and I can talk a little bit more about my history. I think I grew up um, in the 80s. I really came of age in the 80s and early 90s. There was no consciousness at the time about trans people even existing. So the assumption was always that it was something to do with my sexual orientation. And I remember as a young person thinking, you know, I'm not attracted to anybody yet. <laughs> like, I don't know what all this, um, you know, attention around this is. Like, I know that, you know, I feel more comfortable in a dress. Um, there wasn't much of an understanding of that experience at the time. And I think that with Transparent, with a growing presence of trans people and pop culture, um, perhaps that'll change, but um, the two things are very different, you know? One is about who you're drawn to, and one is about who you are. I don't know exactly how to ask this, but you, you talked about the character looks back and says, I've been living a lie. Is that, is that kind of always the way it is, or is there an evolution where you say, no, no this is who I am now? Like I think about, I was completely homophobic as a, <laughs> my wife just said true, uh, <laughs> as a younger man, but there was this transition and learning of who I am and who people are and who God has made us all. So is there, is there always this looking back saying I've been living a lie or is there... Is, is it growth instead of regret? Is that, is yeah, that what you're yeah. saying? Is there, is there always that sort of regret of like, I've been living this 20 year lie or I've been, or it's just, this is who I was, mm. this is what I knew, and now I know something else. You know, I, I celebrate think, that. I think the story is always changing. And I think that looking back um, on particular, you know, experiences that define who you are, um, it'll mean different things to you at different points in your life. So my gender variance at a, as a young person meant something very different at the time that it does now. And then when I was 14, I met something very different again and 21. Um, I think, you know, that the best case scenario is that we accrue life experience, that we meet more people that we're open to, that we're learning all the time. Um, and that expands our ability to connect with people. I, d I do think that there is just an infinite variety in terms, of, I, just from my small sampling of the people I've met, I mean, people who have clearly suffered, um, th that there's been a cost uh, uh, to, a uh, to uh, shame or having to keep a secret about something so fundamental to the way they are in a way that I can't uh, imagine, and then, Next to them is somebody who's like, um, uh, it, 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 that kind of suffering or that, or that response to having a secret was something they kind of celebrated and, um, and enjoyed and was part of their individuality, whereas to someone else it's, you know, complete oppression. I think it, I think it varies. Um, that, I, I mean, just as a, uh, Doing a small part on this, it, it, you really did realize that every one of these situations was radically different. Um, uh, I don't know. Hi, um, thank you for doing this. This is really great. My husband and I have three kids. Our oldest is in kindergarten, identifies as trans. 
um, doesn't fit into either gender box really very well, so non-binary is what we say. Uh -huh. Hasn't quite figured that one out yet, but definitely knows what <laughs> transgender is and, and is proud of it. And uh, we find ourselves in our kindergarten, in our school, that the, the task in front of us has been bringing this conversation to other families and other kids, because a lot of people see this as not a kid's issue. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what's it gonna take to get people past that? People like you. You know, I think, you know, honestly, it's a, it's a grassroots effort. It takes all of, you know, it takes everybody involved. It takes, you know, being the uncle of a trans person, being the father of a trans person, being a trans person. I think that it's a lot of pressure to uh, kind of expand awareness and uh, everybody's understanding of difference. Um, we all have to do our part. But it's incredible that you're raising a child and being sort of um, responsible to their truth. You know, I think so often parents uh, try to regulate and sort of push kids in one direction or another. That's really admirable. I'm thrilled to hear that. I mean, I'm thrilled that parents like you are around. Hi. So um, I have a question. I was wondering if you could give me your perspective on something. My mom is a high school teacher, and we were talking last night. We saw that this was a topic. We were talking about her experience with, she's had at least one student who was trans, but she at that time she didn't understand it. She didn't know how best to support the student, and she, was, she brought it up because... Um, because of this event, but then also there was a faculty meeting, they were talking about the issue of bathrooms, students choosing a bathroom, and she said that one of the administrators said that um, students are allowed to use whatever bathroom they want, but they have to choose one. And that kind of bothered me, that statement, so I was just wondering if you could offer your perspective on how faculty in public school, or just school in general, specifically high school, can best support the experience of trans students and like because my mom wanted to know what I thought and I told her what I thought but that's not really you know mine to dictate so could you could you just you know offer what do you think about that what I can relay back to her because she really yeah. wants to do what she can but she just doesn't know how yet does that make yeah, sense yeah definitely like how to present yourself as an ally I think just googling you know how to be a trans ally is a great place to start um, there's a, a transgender pride flag that's different than the gay pride flag, but maybe putting that up on your door as a teacher. Um, I think bathrooms are ground zero for gender policing. Um, and in, in Transparent, in episode four, right, there's a bathroom incident. I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you have seen the show or not, but um, Maura's bullied out of a bathroom. That happens to trans people all the time, most of us, um, at some point are, you know, policed, you know, in a bathroom. I think uh, that we need to have gender neutral bathrooms everywhere, you know, with like private little doors, you know, so we're all partitioned into our privacy. <laughs> but um, I th it's certainly a challenge, and I think education, I mean, we see it in liberal arts campuses across America as well, sort of um, making drastic efforts to accommodate their trans students. Um, I think secondary education has a little ways to go. But um, I would, yeah, just start by Googling how to be a trans ally and email me. I'll talk to her. Yeah. Yes. As Ed always says, this is the hardest part of the day around here, is to bring this to an end. Um, this has been fascinating and wonderful, and uh, let, please join me in thanking Zachary and Bradley for being with us this morning.